Hi, I'm Sarah, and I've done a few videos in the past just about, you know, general things you can do, how to do your budget, how to save money. And a few people have been asking lately, especially on the Facebook group, of specifically what to do in winter. What can you do during the, the colder months to cut down on your expenses? So I thought, okay, time for a chatty chat. Some of these things are things you can implement straight away. Some are more things to think about maybe for next year or plan ahead. Power prices across the board here in New Zealand have been going up. I think pretty much all the power companies have put their prices up. And so we get a lot of questions and a lot of posts saying, hey, who's the cheapest company out there? Um, unfortunately, there is no one size fits all answer to that. Even what might be cheapest for your neighbor might not be cheapest for you. It all comes down to your power consumption, how you use it, you know, what, what appliances you've got. It really does differ for each person. So I would highly recommend going on to websites such as What's My Number or NZ Compare is another good one because they do, they do um, insurance companies and different things like that as well. So it's always worth shopping around. Um, also bear in mind that not all power companies will be on those websites. So it could just be worth as well as going to the comparison sites, actually just Googling and maybe even placing some phone calls, putting out some feelers, putting out some emails, asking what, you know, what their rates are. Also approach your power company that you're currently with and check that you're on the lowest plan. Um, that will give them a nudge to say that, hey, this person is shopping around. <laughs> so they will, they will often sharpen the pencil or sweeten the deal a little bit or maybe give you a bit of a freebie or some incentive to stay with them. If you have got cheaper night rates or I think the hour of power, some companies call it, where you've got either a lower rate over a certain hour during the day or power is free for one hour during the day, Needless to say, pounce all over that. <laughs> load up your dishwasher, load up your washing machine. If you can set them on a timer to be going at that time, then definitely do everything at that time. Bake your bread, do some baking, even pre-cook dinner so you only have to heat it up later on depending on what you're making. Um, yeah, totally take full advantage of that. Now also, when it comes to your, your air conditioners, your heat pumps, make sure you've cleaned the filters. Really, really important. You can go all out and take them out and give them a really good rinse under hot water. That's the best way of cleaning them. But otherwise, just a vacuum. Even if you just get your vacuum nozzle up there, give them a clean. It will improve how well your aircon slash heater works. It will, yeah, and it, it will be a lot more energy efficient. I have done videos on servicing your own air conditioner. I'll link a few of my videos in the description down below that might be relevant to what I'm talking about. So have a wee look at that. In regard to using your oven, I mean, ovens in general aren't that expensive to use. However, it's worth noting that my oven, I realized that whenever I was using it, just the top part above the door was starting to get all fogged up. And I thought that's a bit odd. And then I realized I was actually losing quite a bit of heat out of it. So this, this was only about a month ago. And so um, my husband actually looked up where to get the door seals from and he actually replaced the seal on our oven. And since then, yeah, I haven't been having that problem. So obviously my oven is now working a lot more efficiently. <laughs> so it is worth checking the seals around both your oven and your fridge. They can both be replaced. So just in regard to energy efficiency, that's one thing to do. If you have a double oven with a larger top oven, smaller bottom oven, if you can get away with using the smaller one, do so. Obviously, less time, less energy to heat it up to bring it to temperature. Um, when you've finished cooking, leave your oven door open because I know that my oven, it actually keeps on whirring and whirring because it cools itself down. It tries to expel the warm heat. So number one, leaving the door open helps it out so it's not operating for as long. But the secondary thing is, it's a bit of free heat for your house. <laughs> well, not free, but you know, 
it's a bit of heat that you're letting into your house so it all helps with that if you have a fireplace that you can cook on top of yes absolutely use that i love doing that i've even done roasts on top of our fireplace um, roast meat I should say you can't really get the crispy top like you can in an oven you can't really do roast nice crispy roast potatoes but when it comes to just slow cooking something like a bain-marie bit of water in the bottom of the roasting pan put it up on a wire rack put a lid on and it'll just steam it throughout the day and you could just finish it off in the oven if, if you want a bit of a nice crispy topping or something on it. Anything that I would cook on the stove top, when we've got the fireplace going, I cook it on the fireplace. <laughs> um, even my veggies, I'd normally cook them in the microwave, that's just how I prefer to doing them, just like, you know, the bags of frozen veggies. But if I've got the fireplace going, I'll put them in a pot of water and just cook them on the fireplace. Your kettle, it's worth getting, you can pick up reasonably cheap kettles. I haven't looked how much they are lately, but I think our one was pretty cheap when we first got it. Um, to put on top of your fireplace. So instead of boiling the jug every time you want a cup of coffee, just have your kettle sitting on your fireplace. And it's great for brewing tea in as well. Put a couple of tea bags in your kettle. With regard to the kettle as well, if you're not boiling on the fireplace, only put as much water in the jug as you need. I know I used to be terrible at this and that's filling the jug all the way up just to make one or two cups of coffee. Um, you don't need to, even if you get your cup, fill it up, put that in the jug. <laughs> so you know exactly how much you're boiling. Um, boiling the jug, you know, it, it can add up, especially if you're um, one of these people who boils it and then forgets it and then has to reboil it. <laughs> totally guilty of that but um yeah so just put as much in as you're going to use also the top of your fireplace something you may not have thought of water for washing the dishes you use a lot of hot water when you wash your dishes so if you've got some hand washing to do put a big pot of water on there boil it up on top of there and use that and just top it up with a bit of cold and you've got water for doing your dishes. This is a personal preference one. I've never really had a clothes dryer. I just put my clothes on, on racks in front of the fireplace. Um, a lot of things I'm mentioning here will is things that will cause moisture in your house. Of course, that's something that it is cheaper and healthier to heat a home that does not have moisture. You may wish to think about a dehumidifier. Um, you know, it, every morning it is worth, as much as I would say that if you have a well insulated house and you've got the right sized heat pump and all that sort of thing, it's often cheaper to leave your heat pump running. On the flip side of that, it really is good to air your house out at least once a day. So you still want to turn that off. Open up your windows, even if it's just for 10 minutes in the morning, close them again, get a cloth, just wipe away condensation from your windows. Um, it could be worth looking into getting a dehumidifier or maybe a heat pump that's got a dehumidify function on it. Um, but yeah, if you are drying your clothes indoors, as I say, it's healthier and easier to heat a home that is dry. Now speaking of keeping a dry warm home, I haven't tried this but I have heard people doing this, especially people who don't have double glazing or don't have great insulation and have problems with condensation, they put bubble wrap over their windows. Apparently it works brilliantly, I've heard of a lot of people that do that and they swear by it. No condensation, it's brilliant, it adds a layer of dryness. Um, but also, you know, get some really nice well-lined curtains. The area above your curtain, you could even, if you have draft problems, roll up a towel and pop it over your curtain rail in that area above your curtain. So, you know, that, that can potentially stop any drafts, that sort of thing. Of course, draft stoppers under your doors. Insulation. It's worth getting up in your roof and just having a look at your insulation because it is amazing how much it does shrink down over time. Now of course that's an expense, you know, that's something to, to look at maybe saving up for or go online and check if you're eligible for, I think it's called the Healthy Kiwi Warm Homes Grant, something like that. I don't think it's quite that wordy 
but if you look that up you'll find it um, so and they they will actually give you some money towards the cost of doing insulation and that sort of thing in your home so it is well worth going up to the roof and just checking if the insulation is below the um, the battens is that what they're called I'll probably correct myself with some words up here um, but if your insulation is below them you need to look at topping it up um, you may see when we did our video on building a sleep out we actually used a whole heap of insulation that we got free from skip diving <laughs> um, because my husband works in the air conditioning industry and we got insulation from some insulated pipes from, from heat transfer systems and we used that and we just layered about five of them up and used that as insulation and that is good stuff, that will not shrink down. Um, you know, not everyone will have access to that sort of thing but it's, it's the sort of thing that's worth asking around about. Now also on the topic of insulation, that is one reason it's also worth looking into investing in some LED lights. Of course they're more expensive than normal lights, um, you know, we had to save up to get our house done, but if you get the right kind of light, with your good old fashioned light bulbs you cannot put insulation over the top of them in the ceiling, so you will actually have these holes cut out of your insulation. And if you add up how much that comes to, all up, there's a big chunk of your ceiling that's not insulated up there. You get the right kind of LED lights, you can actually put insulation directly over the top. So we did that and we felt an instant difference when we did that. So that's something else that is well worth looking into. If you've got a heated towel rail, it's actually worth switching that off. Now, it, when your towels are wet, what I do is, to my husband's annoyance, because he likes it going all the time, <laughs> but I, I'm a bit stubborn, I, I turn it off when the towels are dry. You know, if one of us has just had a shower, towel goes on the towel rail, I switch it on to dry the towels. I know it's nice getting up in the morning and having a nice dry, a nice, a nice warm towel there, but um, you can save quite a bit over the course of a year. It's like anything, little wee things add up. Um, it's a bit like, you know, turning everything off at the wall. You know, it's, it's not going to save you a fortune, but it will save you a bit, bits add up. The season we're in at the moment, we've still got some sunny days, there's still apples growing on the trees. If you can still forage for the likes of, you know, wild apples growing around the place, absolutely do it, it is so worth it. Um, because, you know, the, fr the price of fresh produce is going up at the moment. So if you can get some apples, even if you think you're not going to use a bucket load of apples before they go off, preserve them, freeze them, put them in jars, do some baking, do a, do a big heap of baking in the school holidays. I did a whole heap of baking with some apples that we're growing on our land, chopped it up and put it in the freezer so we've got baking for school lunch boxes there every day. Um, so yes, yeah, stock up when you can, preserve when you can, don't waste anything. Um, also, I am going to really try and keep my veggie garden going over winter, which will not be easy. <laughs> we're, we're actually just about to harvest all of our pumpkins. We've got about 10 pumpkins out there. And so I'm going to store them away. So that will be a really great source of nutrition over winter. Um, I've also got my brassicas, as I think they refer to them, the cabbages, cauliflowers, broccoli, I've got all them, their seedlings about that big. If you're planting at this time of year, you really want to be, you, you can't plant seeds really at this time of year, you want to buy some decent sized seedlings. So trying to keep on growing your own veggies, which is enthusiasm wanes over winter because it's chilly out there, but <laughs> it, is, it is worth trying to keep going. Bok choy is another good one. The caterpillars are eating mine at the moment. But yeah, also keep it seasonal with your food. Um, with your fruit and veggies, don't really expect to be eating tomatoes and lettuces over winter. You want to revert more to, to coleslaw, you know, your onion, carrot, cabbage sliced up. Um, unless you're into your hydroponics, which we're 
currently in the process of. I promise videos in regard to that will be coming up, but it's taking a fair amount of setting up. <laughs> so we will we'll keep you posted with that. Open your curtains. If it's a nice day, say it's me with the curtains drawn, but I promise that's just lighting issues. If <laughs> see if I open the curtains. So if I open the curtains here, then you can't see me. It's, yeah. So that's, that's why I always, when I'm doing a chat, I always have my curtains drawn. <laughs> anyway, but when it's a nice warm day, open the curtains as soon as you can in the morning. Let that sun come in because that will heat your house. When the sun starts going down, sort of four o'clock in the afternoon or whenever, then that's the time to um, then draw your curtains as soon as the sun leaves a room. Draw your curtains, keep the heat in. The curtains are a good source of insulation. Your winter clothes. Obviously, you often need to stock up in, on your winter clothes. Um, second hand. Needless to say, second hand. Go to the second hand places. They've actually, they've often got some really nice stuff. I actually got my son a really nice, near new looking winter jacket for $10. Even your kids' school uniform, some schools revert to a winter uniform over winter. Um, if you can, ask around, ask on the local Facebook pages and see if anyone has any second-hand uniform items that are for sale, um, or even shoes, things like that. It can, it can all really, really add up, all these kind of, especially if you've got several kids to clothe. But yeah, absolutely, trawl through the second-hand shops, St John's, Salvation Army, places like that, and you will be amazed at how much really nice, decent winter gear you can pick up. That's pretty much me for now. I hope some of this has been of some help or some inspiration or just a reminder <laughs> to do certain things. But um, as I say, I will ref if you click on the description below the video, I will link in some more detailed things like how to clean your air conditioner how to know if it's the right size, how to, you know, how, how to do your budgeting, that sort of thing. Um, and any other tips, absolutely leave them down below because people will be scrolling through the comments. Any more ideas you can contribute to this, the more the better. Um, so yeah, leave us a like, leave us a comment, hit the subscribe button and have fun out there. Bye.